Hello everyone watching on Twitch and YouTube. We're currently live re reviewing three of the best NEC5 games. I think it's really good before the tournament dies down. Let's go ahead and review the best games of the tournaments and make them live on forever on our YouTube channel. And of course, it is the last NEC. So, it, you know, it's a bit bittersweet and we want to make sure we're making the most out of it here. And this game between me and Yo is the first game of, spoiler alerts, leave if you haven't watched it, close the video. First game of the grand finals. And uh, we're going to be hopping in here with Turks against Portuguese. Portuguese being Yo's first pick. I'll break down what's at stake here as I fail the deal alert, which sucks. I'll break down what's at stake here. And then we'll break down the game for you guys to enjoy as well on YouTube. Uh, we are reviewing, of course, the, thir the three best NEC5 games. Uh, at least the one that's not two hours long. And uh, yeah, I think this one is one of the better arena games that I've ever played in my life, actually. And uh, you you'll, you'll see why. If you haven't seen this game, you're in for a treat. You have me playing as Turks, which I consider to be one of the best arena civs, at least after Malay and Burgundians. Malay was picked by Yo. Burgundians were banned out. And Yo goes for Portuguese, which was his first pick. So he clearly thought Portuguese was the best arena civ. And he's going to show us why he thought that. He's going to go for some crazy, crazy aggression. And it's, in my opinion, one of the best strats that I've seen done on arena. It's not exactly new. It's been around for a little while. But I didn't know it was as strong as it, as it was. And you, you'll see exactly how it plays out here. And for me, as Turks, going into this game, just to give you a little bit of insights, I just wanted to play a pretty standard arena game. Of course, Turks can go for some like crazy fast temps. They could go for Janissaries. But they could go for like the standard arena game, which is Light Cav and Boom. And that is kind of what I wanted to do going into this game. I wanted to just play some Light Cav. You get the free attack as Turks. Extra Pierce Armor is nice. And then you get to develop your economy and then go into like a really strong late game with heavy CA potentially as a good option. All of the strong you know, gunpowder, free chemistry lets you go into bomber cannons right away. But my plans are quickly thrown out the window when Yo goes for what he decides to go for. We're going to speed it up to times to speed as it's just going to be Arena Dark Age. Both players kind of developing uh, and, and going for a standard fast castle because no matter what you go for, it's always going to be like more or less a fast castle unless you see a tower rush, which is not too popular amongst the pros. Yo is going to go for a much faster click because he wants to do a rush. And when you rush, you want to get the castle as fast as possible. And he is going to go, I think, 24 pop. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see. He's about to click up here, I believe. There it is. I just have to go 25 pop. It should have been 26, though. 25 was ambitious, and you'll see. I run into a little bit of problems. It's a small mistake on my end there. He goes for a 24 pop, goes up to Castleage, and with the Portuguese, that means he gets some really nice savings uh, on wood. And he actually has only three villas on wood. He has five on berries. And that's going to be all the wood he needs with a bit of straggler help to get by in this early game. Talking a little bit more about the stakes as well. This is, of course, the grand finals. And I think I'm going in a slight favorite. But like against Yo, I think nothing can be taken for granted. So I, I see this matchup as like more or less 50-50, especially after the draft. Random Civ bans kind of screwed me over. I feel like a lot of my favorite Civs were banned out. Yo also finished me off by banning two more of my favorite Civs as the, his player bans. And it felt like the draft was really not favoring me. At least I was completely out of my comfort zone starting from the draft. So I feel like Yo just did so well to put me out of my comfort zone. And now he's going to try to, you know... Prepare some nice, some nice rushes to try to get advantage in the best of nine. Of course, there's going to be a lot of games. Regardless, if he wins the first, you know, two or three games, there's always still a chance in the best of nine. And he's going to go out straight out the gate, basically, with his strongest pick. His first pick here with the Portuguese. And as you can see, his strategy is becoming clear here. He's going to go for organ guns. Now, from my perspective, I actually knew Yo would do this because I know he likes Portuguese. And I know he likes the organ gun strat. But I thought he would go castle at home. And then organ guns from home to go forward. He goes, and you'll see in a second, for a forward castle. Like, the ball's on this guy. I didn't think he had it in him. In hindsight, if I expected a forward castle, I could have made a couple spears. Could have delayed horse call. I went for like one more scout. I could have gotten a few units on the field to defend myself against the forward castle. But I had no idea he would go for that. And he just brings 8 villagers here. 
And look at his economy. One on food, two on gold. <laughs> this is like looking pathetic. But he has what he has, which is stone. And he's going to drop the castle. It doesn't get more of a forward castle. And meanwhile, he's actually dancing with me here. I'm in like my own world. Just trying to get his scouts. And then, bam, I see a castle. I'm like, oh shit, I have to go defend that. I, I, I kind of thought like forward castle might happen, but didn't expect him to go for it. And he even gets the quick walls down. So no mistakes from him. Castle's there. And this is a tough situation for me now because like organ guns, if he makes the castle at home, it's hard to deal with them. They break walls very fast. If you have like some Magnus with them, for example, they beat like all units, basically. They only died to Redemption Monks. Turks don't have Redemption Monks. And I'm obviously not going for Janissaries since I didn't mine stone. And I'm really struggling. Like even organ guns from home would be tough. Imagine organ guns right here. Castle will break my walls and I have to deal with organ guns so fast. And notice this, no stone axes, two stones. Completely taken away by this one castle. What, what a great game plan from Yo so far. He doesn't know about the stone here, but he knows about this one. And he obviously was a bit fortunate that I had a forward stone. And at this point, I go for some crazy plays. Because I, I, I felt like I'm, I'm truly like out-strategized. I felt like I, I I don't think I can beat this. So I wanted to try to get some like cheesy vil kills. Get it ahead that way. But I ended up actually just putting myself further behind. I lose the light cap for free. And I feel pretty bad about that. Uh, oh, do Turks have redemption? Some of the chat saying Turks do have redemption though. I thought they didn't have redemption playing into this. Uh, I think they don't have sanctity. They're missing something in, in terms of monks. No, they don't have redemption. They have block printing and sanctity. They don't have redemption. I can't. Am I wrong on this? I'm pretty sure Turks do not have redemption to, to shatter. So either way, under the assumption that we don't have redemption, I go for a siege workshop at home to go for Mangonels to hopefully defend against the organ guns and decide to go for some boom. Uh, you know, two TCs to get ahead in Vils because I know he's got only one. They have Redemption and no block printing. Okay. Ah, so I could have went Redemption Monks, actually. Interesting. No block printing does hurt an imp. Okay, that's that's on me then. I I, I thought I had no Redemption, so maybe I, I misplayed that. But under the assumption that I had no Redemption, I decided to go Mangonels. Uh, redemption Monks could have been a, a decent option as well. And at this point, uh, I'm trying to get value with the light cap, as you can see, like preventing him from taking relics, but he's just doing so well at preventing me from you know getting value and then i kill like one scout and that's basically it maybe i get some value later i try to keep them alive check up some ground attacks yo is on the ball with everything he's not really um not really giving me any any mistakes he goes for sanctity now and actually even in hindsight even if i went redemption monks he can go atonement monks and i think he can be just fine with that as well so it, it is hard to say Snipe a monk, both light cap down. And so my three light cap basically got one of his scouts and one of his monks. So not the best value I've ever had. And Yo is now going to be building up into a fast dip while putting some pressure with organs. He's going to go redemption, organs, and then fast dip right after that. And he has enough stone for another forward castle as well. And he has just enough farms to get up to Imperial Edge in a reasonable time. Not going for a second town center, not going for anything crazy like that. Second Monastery now. Now we see two TCs for me kind of paying off. I'm up at 47 bills. So this is like relatively okay for me. But I know that I'm about to lose a lot of space. And I know that my Mangonels are not going to get too much value here. I think I killed one vill or... Yeah, I killed one vill there. I remember him going down. So that's like somewhat okay. But pretty much nothing else. And now as soon as the Redemption Monks come in, my Mangonels become a lot worse. At this point, you could make the argument that I should have been making light calf to counter the monks. But in my mind, and this is good that I'm reviewing my game, I get to give you guys a little bit of my insight. At least what I was thinking, not sure if it's right. In my mind, I knew I needed to go imp faster to, uh, to have even a chance to push back the castles. So instead of trying to deny the castle, I wanted to let him have the castle and then try to win an imp. So my plan was to go for a fast imp, use the free chemistry from Turks, and go bomber cannons to push back the castles. That was my approach to it. Maybe if I went like mass light cav here with mangonels, I could have stopped it. It's hard to say. You know, maybe multiple approaches could work as well. But anyways, he goes for a super forward castle. At this point, I'm stressing. 
almost get a monk not quite again yo is playing pretty solid starts converting my stable so i'm really feeling the pressure here losing my only stable my magnos are becoming very useless so i decided to use them right now unfortunately he gets a really good conversion here and I end up losing all three magnos and i only killed two monks in exchange rough castle goes up it's looking so tough for me right now i go him though my plan is kind of okay here i'm going up to imperial age but i have no loom because i'm stupid <laughs> i still have no loom i forgot he converted the stable so organs come in and it's a disaster after disaster here i try to make the most out of a bad situation here that guy someone put some flowers on his grave because that guy goes down a hero right there he saved me like two three other bills obviously costed him his life though at this point i i needed to have loom i completely forgot to get it i picked it up right now and I lost quite a few bills, and I'm in a really bad spot. I decided to try to run away, expand out to the you know outside, have some golds and stuff, defend with Mon Maganel. So I'm you know kind of scrambling. I land my first decent shot, but he's got a monk here, which makes makes things extremely extremely complicated. And now like not only did I lose some bills and my talent center, I'm gonna lose a lot of farms. It's hard to like farm, um, which is a big problem as well. His monk chasing my Magnal away, so I can't even defend against the Oregons. I have to send a Vill here, actually, to body block the monk and save my Magnal. So as you can see, I'm working with very little. I actually gave up a Vill just to get my Magnals back into the action. Guess the conversion runs away. And now I'm waiting for him. I go for some Hussar, because I get the free upgrade. I'm waiting for you know Imperial Age to start going cannons. Cannons can be really good against the castles, really good against pretty much everything he has until he gets imp. Which, speaking of uh, imp, he actually just clicked. So I'm, I'm going to have, you know, two minutes and a half in imp for him. So my plan is working, but I took a lot more damage than I wanted to take. So I would say Yo's plan is working much better right now. Monk continues chasing me. I, I wait for his attack. Kind of sick to get a free Hussar come and snipe the monk. That's a good entrance for them. Saves my Magnus, which become very important long term, by the way. You'll see how much value they, they get me. And look at my economy now. Like, it's really bad. I lost my market, so I have 600 gold. I can't use it. I barely have enough farms to do anything. I can only afford one cannon. And, like, I have three Hussar. <laughs> yeah, that's just so rough. Like, I have nothing. I, I feel broke, man. It's not a good feeling. And I, I'm trying to get little trades here with my Magnus. Uh, I get a little fortunate with some conversions. But Yo comes in with another castle. I think that's a mistake, actually. I think that third castle, although it's in a good position, I think it doesn't really change the game enough to consider it. Would have been better if he tried to pressure on this side and prevented me from expanding, maybe. It's hard to say, though. In the moment, this felt like a really good castle for him, and it ends up being okay. Like, it's gonna force me off another six, seven farms, force me off the gold, so I have to expand to the left and continue playing, and now I have to rush down a market because I lost my initial market and my economy is terrible. Mangan, I was trying to help defend, but the monks are always there. Imperial Age is coming in. Imperial Age, what does it get Portuguese? It gets me... Ooh, big shot by the cannons there. It gets the Portuguese player all the monk techs. It gets some Fatorias. And look at the Mangan, that's why I say they're so crucial. This is such a key moment because it saved my two cannons that were getting converted. The Sar go down by snipe some monks. Now I'm stabilizing. He's up to Imp. Does he go Fatoria right away? No, he goes for monk techs first. Plus, I think he goes for some Trebs, I think, eventually. But for now, just Monk Tex. Big shot with the cannons there. Killed a couple organs. Killed three, I believe. And now I gotta start pushing back some castles. This castle especially is really important. Because that castle is too close to like the, my operating area. This castle is like, good. Taking up my farms. It's not that important though. Because I'm, I'm fighting more like the middle, right? At this point, I don't have devotion. I couldn't afford it, actually. Uh, it's a good upgrade, but... And it's not too expensive, but I just have... I'm broke. I have nothing. So I decided I want some Hussars instead. Maybe Devotion could have been better though, because this Hussar actually gets converted, which sucks. Because uh, now I have nothing to counter Hussar, bro. I have just Hussar of my own. The Siege won't do anything. And now I'm trying to expand, keeping the economy flowing. I mean, look at how tight my base is and my situation. It's not pretty at all. Yo, of course, doesn't have too many bills, but his, his bills are at least working like perfectly. Hussar will get some value. Monks continue chasing me, and I think this one actually picks up a conversion. I try to attack round it, but 
I don't know. I kind of messed up. I didn't, I didn't get the best attack rounds ever with my cannons. And actually, his organ guns are not doing that much against my Hussar because I get the extra pierce armor. But I couldn't afford too many more armor upgrades. So maybe if I got full armor upgrades, my Hussar would be so strong. But I just don't have the economy for that. Mangonels, again, just more footage of Mangonels being MVP, sniping monks. Those are so good. So broken. Love Mangonels. I mean, they're not actually broken, but they felt broken in this game. And as far as my economy, like... Bill Count's like closing in. He has only eight less than me. And I have just the cannons. And yeah, I missed that attack round, which is I think super crucial. Had I hit that, I would kill two monks and be amazing. But I miss it. Get two Magnus converted, and now oh no, now it's terrible. I feel like I just lost the game here. This felt really freaking bad. Ah, oh, that was rough. I lost two cannons, got one converted. Magnus. Oh man, I lost three cannons total. And if you think about it, like, I know I killed this maggot on this cannon. These are not his. These are mine. I killed only, like, three monks of his. And now I'm like, okay, I need a desperation play. So I dive as monks. I say, screw you. I'm going for you. And I actually kill a lot of them. So this feels, like, pretty good. At least some payback. I ended up losing the Hussar, but at least I sniped some monks. Feels okay, man. And back home, he hasn't started Fatorius yet. We'll keep an eye on that when he decides to go for that. At this point, I have to restart from scratch. How many arena games? I have to just restart from scratch. Because I lose my army or I get I get cleared. It feels like it happened every arena game this tournament. So I have to remaster the cannons. Monks are still being so annoying. I, I can't kill it. Please. <laughs> Finally, I hit an attack round there. I still lost the Hussar though. And now my Siege Workshop is dying. So I have to remake it. This Town Center is dying. I'm down to two TCs. And it's basically just the cannons that I have. But something about my situation felt okay. I'll tell you how it felt like in the moments. I had a unit that he couldn't really counter, which is the cannon. Except with some monks. So it felt like I was always in the driver's seat. It's a weird feeling because I didn't feel like I was winning. But it felt like I could make my own luck and I could outplay him. And the feeling of like, okay, I have a chance to outplay him. That kept me going very well. I, I really enjoyed that feeling. So although my situation was objectively like worse in a lot of this game, it felt like I was picking the fights that I wanted to. And I, I had good opportunity to take good trades and to claw myself back into the game. Back home though, Yo is going for Fatoria. I'm officially on a timer. I have to clear three castles and push into his base in the next like five minutes. If I can't manage that, I am guaranteed to lose because Fatorias, although they take up a lot of pop space, they boom so much faster. I have to make TCs make villagers make farms gather wood all of that that's how i build my economy he just makes the fatoria i pick up devotion here and look at this he goes to three fatorias instantly it's like it, let's say each fatoria is like around 10 bills worth instantly it's 30 bills that's pretty quick you see the power of fatorias here so now i'm on a big timer they're also infinite so like when golden stone ran out the fatoria is still cooking so he's got infinite res He's got more villages working as far as efficiency goes than, than I do. And so I'm now on a really big timer. What do I have now? I have the better economy right now because I have 10 extra villas. They've been working for a, you know, quite a long time. And I have potentially the better composition with cannons and Hussar. Now my Hussar are you know, actually in a good spot. They have you know relatively okay numbers and relatively okay upgrades. Four Fatorias. Crazy. Maybe he should have stopped at four. He went for five total. I really think this game was super close, even at the end. And now my cannons are starting to snowball. I'm clearing up both castles at once. Now I'm feeling really good. But, and I have the score lead, but I recognize he for sure has Victoria. So I know I'm on a timer here. I knew about that. And I'm pushing really fast because of that. Notice I'm not like adding an economy now. I still have two siege workshops. I make a ram by accident. Two siege workshops pumping out units. Because I absolutely know I need to break into this base and win the game. If I don't, I lose. Guaranteed late game. He also has relics, by the way. Like, on top of everything, he has four relics. So, yeah, it's just rough. Like, I have only one. I didn't even take it. It's just rough. Like, late game is not an option for me. So, I'm going to go full early game. Full early imp win here. Big shots in the organs, though. Like I said, this is what kept me going. I felt good about getting those shots. It felt like I was in a good spot. Uh, even though the situation was a bit weird. He's at 160 pop. Look at that. Five Victorias. 
I think the fifth one is ambitious. He should have prepared some defense now. Maybe cannons of his own, maybe Halb, maybe Cavalier. I think Cavalier would have been best. Morphetoria Cavalier would have probably been the perfect response for him right now. Because all he needs is like 6-7 Cavalier and I actually lose if you think about it. My army can't beat that. Hussar not very good against them. He goes for Halbadiers though. Halbadiers are good against Hussar. But they're a little slow pace. And Portuguese, fun fact, don't get Squires. So their Halbadier is not too threatening. And I decide I want to kill this Monastery to get the Relics. But I don't want to waste too much time. So I'm trying to go fast. I end up taking forever. Uh, okay, now I'm like, okay, I have the Relics. Now let's go to his base. Like this is what I see. I'm like, okay, I cleared this. But I see this push on the side. I said, I can't go clear that. I can't defend. I have to break into his base first to kill his Vitorias. If I go defend, I will lose the game. So I did a really nice read of the situation. I go into his base now. And I'm trying to find those Vitorias. Look at me. This is like, I feel like I'm opening into a whole new city. And it's just, I'm feasting now. His villas are running for their lives. I'm coming in. It's like the olden times. My boys are running in. We're going to look for as much damage as possible. He's going to obviously try to go for some quick walls and whatnot. But... Too many exposed fills. We're going to find loads of damage. Cannons. I decide, okay, TC or Fatoria? Nah, let's go for the Fatoria for sure. And Fatoria have very little HP these days. They got nerfed a little bit. And so maybe to pick some of them apart. Taking one down felt really good about that. My score is looking good. But in the meantime, I'm losing my economy. You see how good these arena games are? It doesn't feel like I'm winning at any point. Like, I feel like, okay, it's looking good. But at the same time, I have to lose 40 bills here. I have to run them. Go for some attack rounds on the helps. Ooh, I hit a really nice one there. That was extremely helpful. By the way, I made camels because I thought he would be on Cavalier. So I made camels in advance. Realized I don't need them. Trying to pick up the relics. Needed the monks at the front here. And I said, okay, I might lose the fight versus the helps. If I do, let's kill as many Fatorias as possible. But I didn't realize the situation is great for me, actually. Because I'm killing the Fatorias and he doesn't have the res to even make helps. He needs to buy the wood. And his production building is on the other side of the map. So he was not expecting me to break into his base that fast. He wanted to continue maintaining control and felt like I just, I hit the right timing. If I was two minutes delayed, I think I would lose the game. Incredible game. Incredible strat from Yo. I think if we play this game 10 times, I would probably lose like six or seven at least, maybe more. Um, so I felt like I, I truly, a little bit of luck and, and some good decisions for me led to, led to winning the game. And one of the best arena games uh, I've ever played. Probably second best of the tournament for me. Uh, resource collected was super even. Relics only switched at the very end. And although I have more villas, obviously the Fatorias, you don't see them in the stats, but he had quite a lot of population from them. But in the end, once the Fatorias go down, he would have no chance now. He'd be down to like 40 pop and the game would be over. So he, he taps out. GG well played. And I take the first game of the grand finals. But of course, we go on to play more games. I end up falling behind. And uh, I won't spoil the rest, so make sure to catch up on NEC if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe if you guys did enjoy these NEC reviews. This is the last one of it. We're going to move on after this to some bigger and better content. Take care, and bye for now.